starter keys for breaking free from debt? Okay, all I'm going to do is read them. You are so gullible. <laughs> Key number one. Okay, so the, we're going to start now. Are you ready to start? Okay. Number one, save $1,000. Save $1,000 as quickly as you can. Why? It's the greatest discipline you'll ever do. I'm going to save $1,000. Do you know why you never gave $1,000? Because you never saved $1,000. Save $1,000. Why? It's an emergency fund. You put it away, and you discipline yourself, and you tell your accountability partner, we will not touch it. Some emergency comes along, we can discuss that. But it better, bless God, be an emergency, not, I don't want to clean the old lawnmower, so I'm going to buy a new one. Here's a riveting thought. Mow your own grass. Here we go. This is going over big. Key number two, since you like number one so well, pay off every debt except your mortgage. Or for many of you, it would unfortunately be rent. Pay off every debt. Here's how you do it. You make a list. I've got it in your workbook. You make a list. Here's what I owe. From the largest amount you owe, from the, excuse me, from the smallest amount you owe to the largest amount you owe, right? And you write them down, and you are relentless until you pay them off. Amen. Relentless. I mean... You are like the Mad Hatter. You're going to turn your heat down three degrees. Put on a sweater. Quit running around places you don't need to go and wasting your gas. Use gas for work and church. Stop going to fast food joints. Stop having a paper heart attack in a paper sack. Now, don't look at me if I go through Tim Hortons, because I can. I own my house. I own my car. I own everything in my house. I don't owe anybody anything. And if I did, I sure enough wouldn't be paying Twelve dollars to go through Taco Bell. Make yourself a sandwich. You don't believe me? You don't, you don't believe, I'll, I'll show you this. Let's say you've got a thirty-year mortgage. I'll prove it to you. Let's say you've got a thirty-year mortgage. If all you do, first of all, if you've got a thirty-year mortgage at four percent interest. If all you do is not eat your lunch out, but pack your lunch and brew your own coffee and take it in a thermos, those two things, on a $220,000 mortgage, you will save $100 a month, which will save you $28,000 in interest. All you do is pack your lunch instead of buy your lunch from a restaurant or a fast food place and brew your own coffee instead of going through Starbucks. If that's all you do, it'll save you $28,000. How many of you would like me to write you a check right now for $28,000? 
Well, you don't really because the proof of desire is pursuit. I just told you how to do it, but let's see if you do it. Oh. All right. What step was I on? Key. Key number two, pay off all your debt. List all your debts except your mortgage. Pay off your credit cards, your cards, your student loans, your cars. Start with your least amount owed and just start checking them off. You're not going to do it in a week, but you will do it. Number three, make one extra house payment a quarter. Four times a year, make one extra house payment. Which, am I on the wrong one? Yeah, I am. So sorry. Key number two. Oh, stop. <laughs> Key number one, save $1,000. Number two, pay off your debts, smallest to largest. Three, save. You notice save keeps coming up. Save. Save three to six months expenses in a fully funded emergency fund. What does that mean? You keep putting it away. If you put $50 a week in there, if you put $20 a week in there, keep putting it in there till you're able to look at your expense list and multiply that times three months and you've got that amount of money sitting there in case you get sick, your furnace goes out, your car breaks down so that you don't have to go back into the debt that step number two got you out of. Number four, in, invest 15% of your household income in retirement. Now look, these are sequential. You can't do every one of these right now. You have to start with key one. When you get that done, move to key two. When you've accomplished that, go to key three. Key four, start investing 15%, which you will easily be able to do because you paid your credit card off, because you paid your car off, because you paid your student loan off, and now you've got all that money that you were blowing. You're not very enthused. I, I understand. I understand this isn't, line them up, little bunny foo-foos, let me bop them on the head. All of a sudden, they're, they got a Barbie figure and 100000 in the bank and all their bills paid and don't owe anybody. Just bop them on the head. That's what Christians want. Okay? Not, say, not me. Not me. Okay. 15% household income, not individual income. Over 90% of homes have our two income families. Didn't used to be that way in the 50s, but it is that way now. All right? So that would be both of your income and you're dealing with your gross. So if she makes 1,000 a month and you make 1,000 a month, each of you from both of those are gonna put in $150, that's $300. Understand? Okay. Number five, under God, would you please save for your children's college fund? Would you please love your children? When my children were born, I started saving $20 a week. $20 a week. One's now 28. One's older <laughs> she's been attacked with a really bad strep throat please she's been to the hospital the last two days so please pray for miss ashton uh so now now i take fifteen thousand dollars a year from myself and from my wife that's thirty thousand and for each child, so that's 60000 because I can pass that money to them now and they won't ever have to pay taxes on it. You mean to tell me 
you give your children $30,000 a year? Well, yeah. All I did was save $20 a week. Why didn't you? I didn't go get $60,000. I made $20 a week work for me. I can show you how to do that. How many of you could give up $20 a week for each of your children? You already do. On stuff that's not going to mean one thing to them. Go buy every new toy, every new gadget. Stop. Stop. Chanel ought to have a bank account. It ought to have X amount of dollars in it right now. You should be looking for ways to invest that money for her. And then you look really good. 25 years from now, don't worry about your college. Baby daddy's got it. $20 a week. You don't even save $20 a week for yourself. Before you ever start a budget, here are the first two steps in your budget. You ready? Number one, 10% tithe. If you can't discipline yourself to do that by the command of God, you're going to be in debt the rest of your life. If you can't pay 10% on 100 bucks, wait till you have to pay 10,000 on 100. Wait till you have to pay a million on 10 million. Oh, it's easier then. <laughs> you ain't ever had none. You think it's easier to write a $100,000 check than it is a $100 one? You crazy. I don't care how much money you've got. Everything's relative. Blessed be the holy name of God forever. Number two, 10% saved. I write my tithe check. I write my savings check. Dr. Oral Roberts taught me that when I was 25 years old. Tithe to yourself. Because churches, sure enough, won't take care of you. I'm just telling you what he said. I don't depend on anybody to take care of me. I'm responsible for me and my family. Okay, that went over big. And I don't blame anybody. Well, <laughs> okay, I went past nine o'clock, too bad. Um, <laughs> invest in 401ks. Most of your companies will match that. And also look at Roth IRAs. Number five, save for your children's college fund. Number six, pay off your home early. You can do it. You can do it. I should add in here, get out of renting and own a property. If you'd rather pay rent on some luxury thing and a workout thing and, a, and it's got a pool, well, just go ahead and waste your money. Or you could start saving, get a down payment, get a house, Take a 30-year mortgage, pay it off in 15 years. You're not listening. You totally turned me off. Most of you would be first-time home buyers. You don't even know what that means. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you later. Save for your children. Pay off your home early. Number seven, build wealth and give. That's called legacy. The Bible says leave an inheritance to your children's children. Did you learn anything? Are you totally bored? Are you totally discouraged? Okay, I want you, this is the altar call. I want you to think of one thing that you normally buy all the time that you're gonna be disciplined enough for the next seven days not to buy. You're going to pack your lunch. You're going to, what? I don't know. Maybe you are going to buy something and now you're not. I don't know. Do you have something? Do you have something? Yes or no? While I trip myself here. 
Is there something that you're scheduled to buy this week? You know you're going to buy it. And tonight you can say no. I want you to say no to something tonight. I want you to say no to something. Write, I want you to write it down. And then I'm going to read it to everybody. No, I'm not. <laughs> say no to something. Well, I have to pay my gym membership because I have, to, I have to run. There are roads everywhere. <laughs> Maybe you go to the movie every Friday night. How about no? Not forever, just this week. Why? I want you to learn what it's like to discipline yourself and win small victories. Because everybody tries to climb the mountain, and man, you ain't been on a molehill yet. You want a seven-tiered wedding cake, you ain't had a donut. You got to start. Small goals. Accomplish them. Celebrate them. You, especially. Hey, thanks for watching the video, and I really hope that it was a blessing to you. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment, and share. Feel free to watch a lot more videos, and I'll see you real soon.